All right, verse 1. When he came to, uh, back to Capernaum several days afterwards, it was heard that he was at home, and many were gathered together, so that there was a, were no longer room, not even near the door. And he was speaking the word to them, and they came bringing to him a paralytic carried by four men, being unable to get to him because of the crowd. They removed the roof above him, and when they had dug an opening, they let him down, uh, down the pallet on which he, the paralytic was lying. And Jesus, seeing their faith, faith, said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. But some of the scribes were sitting there and reasoning in their hearts, Why does this man speak this way? He is blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Immediately, Jesus, aware of their, his spirit, and aware in his spirit that they were reasoning that, that way within them, Within, within themselves said to him, why are you reasoning about these things in your hearts? Which is easier, to say the, to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up and pick up your pallet and walk? But so that you may know that the Son of Man has the authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, get up, pick up your pallet, and go home. Verse 12, and he got up and immediately picked up his pallet and went out to the sight, and went out inside of everyone, so that they were all amazed and were glorifying God and said, we have never seen anything like this before. Lord, we thank you for who you are. Lord, it's such a privilege to know that we serve a God who can forgive sins. We serve a God who loves us, even though we, we are not lovely all the time. I pray today, Lord, that I may increase and you may increase. Speak through me to your people. I pray even now for the hearers, that their ears and their hearts will be open to receive what you have to say to them. Lord, so that we, when we walk away, we, we may know you. More, we may love you more. We may be committed to follow you in every area of our lives. In Jesus' awesome name we pray. Amen. 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 Hey, can y'all hear me just fine right now? Yes, yes sir. Do I need to use this? No. Oh, okay. I guess I need to use this, okay? Uh, but, <laughs> but, but here's the thing. I got to look like, yeah, you need to use that. We're recording you, okay? All right, so I want to pull three points out, out from this text tonight, okay? Just as a a overview. We want to we want to run down what was going on right there. I'm sure it's a very familiar passage with most of you all. You know, uh, we had the paralytic, a man who was paralyzed, who could not walk on his own, and he had four of his friends. Uh, he was laying on a pallet or on a little on a little mat, and he had four of his friends take him to Jesus because they knew that Jesus was the only one who could heal him. You know, because the brother was clearly couldn't take go to Jesus for himself. So what ended up happening was that. They went to where Jesus was. They saw that the room that Jesus was in was just full of people. It was insane the amount of people that were there. And they, and, and they were so determined to get their friend to Jesus that they went on top of the house, ripped off the roof. <laughs> they ripped the roof off. I mean, I mean, and mind you, this wasn't just like, no, like, like, like let's pull back a... Like, like a little tin piece of tin, tin foil. No, they had layers to get through. Have, have, you know, have y'all ever been, you know, like, can you imagine somebody trying to rip, rip, rip through this roof right here? They're like, what's well, concrete? Well, it wasn't concrete for them. You, you say it again? It's a, well, yeah, it's a gym up there, yeah. So, so in that time period, there was actually like a, you know, it was a flat roof and they could walk on top of it. And they ripped the roof apart just to get their friend to Jesus. So, so, so they, they got some rope, lowered this cat down in front of Jesus. You know, now mind y'all, can, can, can you imagine a minute now? Think about it. You in there sitting, sitting, sitting back watching this, and you're like, Whoa, wait, what is going on? Wouldn't you be like that? Yeah, yeah. yeah your mind would be blown a little bit. You're like, why is this going? What, what's happening? They were determined. They were determined to get their friend some help. So they got him before Jesus. Jesus saw this man and said, wow, you paralyzed. Yeah, your friends really love you that much. That, you know, and can, can you imagine Jesus looking up and saw his, his poor boys looking over there, <laughs> looking through the, the hole in the wall like, and Jesus like, what's up, y'all? <laughs> hey, yeah, hey, Jesus. Know, like, just like that. <laughs> and so what ended up happening was that the man came to Jesus for, you know, he wanted to be healed because he was paralyzed. 
and yet Jesus did something. He threw a curveball up. He said to him, Son, your sins are forgiven. What? Okay. And then the Pharisees looked at him, that's the religious people of the day, they looked at Jesus, and, and in their heart they were like, who do he think he is? Who do you think you are? By saying, son, your, sin, your sins are forgiven. No one can forgive sins but God alone. Jesus knew what was going on in their hearts and said, okay, I, I, I got this. I know what y'all thinking. My y'all, that's impressive that Jesus could actually understand the hearts and the, the thoughts and intentions of the people watching him. Likewise, you can understand your thoughts and intentions as well. And so this man, you know, the, the Pharisees, the religious people of the day, the church folk, was looking at Jesus and, and was kind of judging them and saying, wait, who, who, who do you think you are? And Jesus said, just, he knew what it was in their heart. He said, just to be show, just for show. I'm, I'm going to let y'all know that the Son of Man has the ability to forgive sins. You know, he said, which is easier, to forgive sins or to make, make you know, heal a man? I actually think, huh? Yeah. No, I think forgiving sins is, yeah, healing is easy. Actually, that's right, bro. Good job. You know, I'm shocked you a little bit, bro. <laughs> and then he tells the man to get up and walk. Take your power and walk. He healed him. So, so first point is this. The first point, and we're going we gonna to look at this, and we see in verse 2, that, and it says, and many were gathered there, so that there was no longer room, not even near the door. And he was speaking the word to them, and they and they came. These these are the four boys, his four, you know, his friends. Uh, and they came, bringing to him a paralytic carried by four men, being unable to get to him because of the crowd. They removed the roof above him, and they had dug an opening. I want to let you know. The first point is this: you were li you were made to live life within the context of community. You were not made to live by yourself. You were made to live, you know, life with people and to actually enjoy life and to be part of, a, part of something bigger and better than you. The reality is, is that many people will tell you that I don't need nobody but myself, right? Is that, is that what you hear a lot? Like, like, I'm cool, I got my own stuff. No, you were made to live life with people. You were made to live life like God. God lived... God is a community unto himself. And God created us to be just like him. You were made to live life in community. Look at this. He had people. He was broken himself. He was hurting himself. And he had people. He had some friends take him to Jesus, right? The friends that you need to have in your life is people who can actually take you to Christ. You need to have friends who actually are, are going to take you to Jesus. And not just, you know, you know, when you're going through stuff, they ain't going to just sit there and be like, man, that's jacked up. You need people who are, who are going to sit down and say, let me pray for you. Let me talk to you about the goodness of the Lord. Actually, let's open up the scriptures and see what, the, what God has to say to you about you. I'm not going to just, I, I'm not going to let you open up your, your skeletons in your closet because honestly, we need some people who can talk, you know, how many of us have problems? You know, things that we kind of deal with secretly. Yeah, a lot of us. You need somebody that, that you can actually take your mask off in front of. You need somebody that, look, look, can I explain something to you real quick? God can't heal what you hide. And you need people in your life that you can take your mask off and say, hey, this is what's going on. The, the paralyzed man clearly let people in his life and say, hey, I'm not doing well. He was even laying on a mat. He couldn't move too far. And yet he had some brothers in his life to say, okay, clearly his mask was off. He could have tried to cover up his, his issues, his, you know, with, with some, you know, you know, try to cover up his issues with, his, with a blanket and like, I'm cool, y'all, I'm just chilling on, on the side of the road. He couldn't do that, right? But he chose not to do that. He chose to say, hey, hey, y'all, I need help. The reality is everyone in here will need help one day. Either you're going to be that friend that's on the mat, or you're going to be that friend carrying somebody to Jesus. 
which one are you going to be? But you need to have some, you, you need community. And you need a community where you can be honest with. Where you can actually take, take your, take it, you know, like, like when you let somebody in your closet and see your skeletons, you need somebody who ain't going to say that I'm going to take this bone that I see right here and take it to someone else. I'm not going to take this bone. You know something? You let me in, into this skeleton. You let me into this. Look, look, Darnell, like, like confession is so good for the soul. If you've been molested, if you've been hurt by somebody, if you've, you've had things happen to you, you need to confess that and talk to somebody older than you, more mature than you. You need to let somebody in. Don't let those, those skeletons fester. But, but a good friend would do this. You know, if, you know, and are you a good friend? Have you ever taken somebody's bone that they showed you to someone else? Look at this. Has someone ever did it to you before? Have you ever told somebody something in secret and they went and told everybody? Yes. Everybody said yeah. Y'all want to know something? If it, it, it's a good chance, that, but, but you tell me you ain't ever done it yourself? You have. You thank you, thank you for being honest. Like, yeah, I have, you know. We all have. A true friend is going to be this. I'm going to see your bone, and I'm going to pray for that bone. I'm going to pray about it. And, I, and, I'm, and then I'm going to point you honestly to Jesus, who can actually deal with the real issue that's, that's at hand. You need, a, you need community, and your community shouldn't be people who are taking your bones to other people, and you shouldn't be people taking their bones to other people either. Amen? You understand what I'm saying by that? Yes, sir. There, you, should have, you should be able to be naked and unashamed in front of these folk. Meaning I can actually get people in my life and, and be vulnerable with them. I can let you touch my wounds. In the book of John chapter 20, we see Jesus did that with his boy Thomas. Thomas was doubting that Jesus had resurrected. And, he, and Thomas said, look, I ain't going to believe it until I can put my hands in his, in his wounds. Touch, I'm sorry, put my hands in his side and, and put my, my hands in, his, in, 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 the, in the nail scar hands. He said, I ain't going to believe it until I can be, like, I can, I can touch him. Now, Jesus wouldn't let nobody else touch him when he rose. He's like, nah, you can't touch me. But, but because of his relationship with Thomas, he says, here, touch, put your hands in my side. Don't to put your hands in my put your hands in, in, my, in, in my wounds. I'm going to be vulnerable with you. That's what you need. He, he said, "Don't do not not believe." That's a double negative. He didn't say that directly, but that's what I'm saying. But believe. You need community, and not just community where you you know where where you just like hanging out with people. You need people that's going, that, that you can be honest with. Not just people you can be honest with. You need people who will take you to Jesus. Do you have that? Do you have that? Next. The paralytic man came to Jesus. And Jesus threw a curveball at him. Let me see this. You know this one you picked up? Thank you. Hold it up for me. That's good. <laughs> Verse four. It says, "Being unable to get him to, uh, to to get him because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him." Look, your friends should be extreme for you to take you to Jesus. Your friends should take you to Jesus in extreme measures. Okay. And sometimes, it's, you know, can I give y'all a little secret about me? Me and my buddy was, uh, I, I, I learned this later, you know, early in my 20s. I had a brother who was actually living, you know, uh, we started to, like, try to have community with each other. We started trying to do life together. We started trying to be friends. And what ended up happening is that, you know, uh, we, he started dating somebody. And we wanted to, to, to remain pure. I mean, I'm like, hey, you want to be pure with that? You want to honor her? Absolutely. And so whenever he had a date with her, he would tell me, Darnell, here, okay, we're going on a date right now. We're going to be home at this time, 10 o'clock. Okay, cool. You know, all right, where y'all going? I'll get the address. I, I would know where they're going just to be safe, right? Yes, sir. 
He said, you know, if, if at 10, you know, at 10 o'clock, I'll be home by that time. Okay, I said, cool. 10.15 came, I didn't hear from him. Guess what I did? Popped up where they was at. That's the kind of community, you know, and I'm knocking on the door like, hey, 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 what's going on? I'm, I'm, I'm walking around the house, you know. <laughs> but that's the kind of community you need. Do you have friends like that? And look, and he'll tell you to this day, and his wife will come to Impact and talk about it like, yeah, Darnell, for real about that. Because I, I, I want, I, 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 you need somebody in your life that care about your walk with Jesus more than you sometimes. Do you care about the? Do you care about your friends walk with Jesus that much? You may say, I don't know. Okay, great. Yep, Point one: You need a community. Number two, right? You know, we we don't see this in verse five. And Jesus, you know, uh, so and Jesus, seeing their faith, this after ripped off the roof, said to the paralytic, paralytic, "Son, your sins are forgiven." But some some of the scribes, <clears throat> verse five, messed me up. Look at this. And Jesus, seeing their faith. Say that to the paralytic, paralytic, son, your sins are forgiven. Jesus, I didn't come to you to get my sins forgiven. I came to you to, to get my head, legs healed. I came to you to be able to walk. Why would Jesus see that the man was paralyzed and not address his most seemingly pressing need? His most important need was what? Y'all think? To walk. To walk. No. Peep game. That wasn't his most important need. Let me explain something to you real quick and hear this. If you don't get nothing else from this, I'm going to tell you this. Your loudest desire is not necessarily your deepest desire. Just because it's the thing screaming at you the most don't mean it's the real need that you need. What I mean by that is this. Y'all ever heard of somebody, you ever heard of somebody being hangry? Yeah. What's, what's hangry? What's hangry? What's hangry, y'all? Hungry. 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 You say what? I'm hungry. I'm hungry and angry at the same time. Okay. So so if I meet somebody who's angry and I say, hey, what up, what up, fam? How you doing? They will say, get away from me. And I'm like, whoa. Look, their lot of desire to them is that they're angry. But the, deep, the, the deepest need is what? Food. food. So if you satisfy the food need, then guess what's going to be happening? What's going to happen? The, hang, the anger is going to go away. P game, guys. Your loudest desire may be that you think, I need to satisfy certain, certain cravings on the internet. Your loudest desire to you, you may think, is that I just need a boyfriend or a girlfriend. Your loudest desire to you may think that I'm attracted to the same sex and I want to be in a relationship with someone who looks just like me. But I'm letting you know that's not your deepest need. Hear me. That's not your deepest need. Your deepest need is that you need your sins forgiven. And you come to Jesus for that. And if you come to him, he'll satisfy you. Just because you feel it's the most, the most important thing in your life don't mean it's, it's really the, the biggest need you need. You hear me? So look. There's an acronym called HALT. H-A-L-T. Y'all heard of that before? HALT. Never make a decision when you're hungry, angry, lonely, or tired. <laughs> Why? Because you end up making de poor decisions. The reality is, is that you deal with you, you deal with the deepest need first, and then you make a de decision. You deal with your deepest need is the fact that you're separated from God, and you come to Jesus to say, "Hey, Lord, I feel these things inside of me. These urges that feel like they're so natural. They feel, but, but they go against what I read in Your Word." But I'm going to come to you and I'm going to surrender these things to you so that I know that you can, you, you can fulfill these. So Jesus tells you that right here that our most important thing is what? That we're sinners. The biggest thing, our biggest issue in life is that we're sinners and we're separated from God. Last thing and then we're going. 
Are y'all with me? <laughs> the last thing is this, is that the only one who can deal with your deepest need is Jesus. Your deepest need is that you need to be forgiven from your sins. But what is sin? Let me explain to you this, is that sin is not just doing bad stuff. Many people come, come to Jesus because they want to get out of hell free card. I, I come to you because I just want you to, you know, I don't want to go to hell. Is that correct? That's not our primary, that's not the primary, you know, most of us come to Jesus for that, but honestly, you're kind of using him. You come to him because you're, you don't come to Jesus because you're, he, he's useful. You come to him because he's beautiful. You should come to Jesus because you see the absolute beauty of who he is. And the fact that he is the only one who's able to, to deal with the, the stain that's on me and all of us, and that's the sin that's in our heart. This sin is not, is, 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 what is this, this, the sin that, we, you know, what is sin? sin? Sin by its very meaning is missing the mark. There's a, it's like you getting, going into your, into your teacher's class and your, the, the, the mark is 100%. Perfection. If anything below 100% is what? Failure. You may say, no, no, we have a scale like that. No, 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 I'm telling you. This is God's definition of perfection. Of, of, of sin is anything that's not 100%. Anyone in this room, per before I kept going, is anyone in here perfect real quick? Oh, you perfect? Oh, snap. I, you know, I know I was in the presence of the divine. <laughs> Look at this. Is anyone perfect? Yes or no? Okay, so that means that all have sinned and fall short of God's glorious standard of perfection. Everyone in here, God's standard of perfection is this, that you love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. And you love each other as you love yourself. That's his standard. And, and, and if you broke one of these, the Decalogue is, is the Ten Commandments. Y'all remember the, the Ten Commandments? The first, the first five, five is, 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 is how we treat God. And the second five is how we treat others. And so our standard of perfection, we, we say, well, I'm not that bad because we compare ourselves to each other. But no, God's standard of, of perfection is keeping all ten laws. All 618 if you want to go to the whole Old Testament. That's the standard. And if you broke broken one, you're good to them all. But the beauty, the beauty about this is this is that if you come to Jesus, Jesus was the, the one who lived the perfect life that you and I couldn't live. He, he, he never not once broke any laws. He, he kept all 618 laws every single day of his, mo of his life. Every moment he kept God's perfect standard. We can't even go a couple of minutes with you. I know when I was coming up, some, some of y'all, you know, if, if you want to know the perfect, the perfect standard, can I just take every thought that you've ever had in your life and put it on a DVD? No. No, 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 I'm talking about every single thought and put it on DVD. Okay, I'm talking about even in the, in the last five minutes, some of y'all came over here looking at me like this. Look who this guy. Y'all had some bad thoughts about me, probably. <laughs> now I'm joking. If I took every one of your thoughts and put it on a DVD and put it up on the screen to play right here, how many of you guys would run out of, out of here and embarrass me? Hey, even before I if, even when, even before I went to go ahead and play, you would come and tackle me. Am I right? That's how you know that you have not lived up to God's standard. We're all in the same boat. And the only one who can rescue us out of this boat is Jesus. If we come to him in faith, it's funny that these five, I mean, these four dudes, in verse five, Jesus, it says Jesus seeing their faith. 
He saw their faith. Faith is not just something we have an intellectual assent to. Faith is something that, that, that we have a demonstrative walk and lifestyle to. You should come to Jesus not just once, but it's a daily thing. Like what? No. It's, no, 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 no. I get you, bro. I get, I get where you're coming from. No, 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 no. I appreciate you. I appreciate that, big dog. Appreciate that. Sin is not just doing bad stuff. Sin is, is, is failing to live God's meek child's perfect standard every day of our lives. And the only one who, who, who met God's perfect standard is Jesus. I'll, I'll put it to you like this. When you go outside tonight, I already put it like this before, and it's so beautiful. If you go outside tonight, what are you going to see? If you look up, look up into the to the sky, what are you going to see? Stars. Huh? Stars and moons. I have a question. This afternoon, did y'all see the stars? Why not? The sun was too light. I've heard it put like this, and I, and I agree with this so much. You will never appreciate the beauty of Jesus until, you know, just like you would never appreciate the stars in the sky. Unless you have the, and until you have the blackness of the night sky, you know, does, the, does the pop of the stars come out? You'll never see, appreciate Jesus until you see his love against the blackness of our sin filled hearts. If you think you're not that bad, you're not going to come to Jesus on a regular basis. If you think, I'm, no, I'm not that bad. No, but if, if you come like that paralyzed man come, because I need Jesus for everything. I need him. He's the only one who can deal with the, the, the brokenness in society. Then you'll find forgiveness. Everyone in here is looking for that. We're looking for peace between us and God. We're looking for peace between us and God. And the only one who can bring us peace is Jesus. Because he lived the perfect life that you and I could not live. He was 33 years on this earth and, and he, did, he did not sin. That's something that we don't give much credit to. His, perfected, uh, his perfect life. And he died a sinner's death that you and I should have died. So that if you place your faith in and he rose from the dead. Oh, I love this part. He rose from the dead. Therefore, defeating our biggest enemy, which was sin and death. So that if you place your faith and trust in him, his perfect life is now credited to your account. He's the only one who, who can deal with the sin problem of our hearts. And you don't just come to him because he's useful. You come to him because he's beautiful. You don't come to Jesus because he's useful. You come to him because he's beautiful. Do you see the beauty of Jesus and the fact that, wow, you loved me for a while I was still a sinner. You died for me. No matter how many times I've messed up, you died for me. You can't change that guy. That's sick. Before we go, the memory verse this morning was Hebrews 9 22. It was according to the law, almost everything is purified with blood, but without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. Jesus Christ's blood that he spilled on the cross covers all of our sins, past, present, and future. Have you come to him? Do you allow his blood to atone for the sins that you and I have committed, not just last week, but today and also for the next X amount of years until you die? If you do, you'll find forgiveness, you'll find healing, and you'll find what that young man, the paralyzed man, was, was looking for. You'll find wholeness in him. I'm going to pray. Are y'all with me tonight? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Wrap it up real quick. Three points again. Point, point, point number one, you were, living, you were made to live black within, within the context of community. 
you need to have honest, real community and don't take people's phones that they show you to other people. Two, your lot of desires after people's need. Just because it, you know you feel it the most, I mean, it's a, it's a real issue that you're dealing with. And number three, the only one who can deal with your real issues, which is your sin, is Jesus. Lord, we thank you for who you are. Lord, I pray for these campers. I pray right now that, that, that you would do a crazy, awesome work in, in them. I know that they're tired. I know that they're doing a lot of stuff here, Lord. But, but it's nothing more powerful than knowing that our sins have been forgiven through the precious blood of Jesus. I pray that, that even going forward, this group will, will, will desire and start praying that you will give them a community. And even if they, they, they don't have that community, Lord, I pray that they go around and seek to be a community to other people. Let them be, let them be friends to people. Let them be honest people. Let them be friends and take, take other friends to Jesus. Lord, and in doing so, let people have an awesome encounter with the one true living God. Lord, let our faith not be just merely intellectual, but it be spirit filled and heartfelt. Lord, we love you. We thank you. Help us love you more. Jesus, also.